Hello everyone, Waldo from Statler here again. Uh, we're on section uh, seven, the pregame sequence uh, of the Ninth Age rule book. Um, yep. So in this section, it starts off and kind of really talks about the steps that you go through as you start your game. Um, right. Determine the size of your game. Which, uh, which is usually is, done way before the game. Way before, hopefully your opponent's already showed up with an army list and you're not <laughs> spending an hour there working on it, which our group sometimes does. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. You know, and they show you the different sizes. Well, it's interesting that 2,500 tends to be more common, but uh, they... Uh, they talk about small battles and they talk about above that, but right. yeah, yeah, twenty five seems to be standard. Yeah, and they don't say anything about the mega battles there, just in the in the the size of game section. Uh, and talk about sharing lists um, as far as what your armies have. The uh, and it talks about keeping sac keeping things secret uh, if you want to, and that goes back to the previous section on magic items and hidden list stuff, hidden or, or yeah. not. So. And I guess that would also apply to things like assassins and right. and uh, and uh, what are they called now? Um, fanatics. Fanatics. Yeah. Fanatics. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Or no, they're not fanatics. They're not what fanatics, are, they? are they? Sneaky gits or sneaky gits? I can't remember. Think. Yeah. No, the sneaky gits are the. <laughs> no, those those are slappers. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Whatever they are. But yeah, but those those types of things. I'm never never been a big fan of those. Yeah. <laughs> the, I'm a huge working goblin player, and for whatever reason, never been enamored with fanatics. Go figure. Yeah. It's just an odd thing. I used to like them you a lot. You used to play them with your archers a lot. So. Well, and I used to like them when we played a lot of hidden list. Yeah. Because then, then people don't know if you have them. You or would not play them one game, don't play them the next game, right, and right. then it kind of made people kind of. Yeah. Anyway, that was one of the advantages I liked about hidden list um, because it helped me. <laughs> You've got to yes, understand. Yes. Um, sharing an army list. I, I've never seen a game where you actually hand the other guy your army list in a friendly. Not game. in a friendly in game. In a tournament, you do. Tournament, you do, but um, in a friendly, friendly, friendly game, game, you usually just briefly go over yeah, what you have. This is what, what everybody has exactly, yeah. and then you usually clarify it halfway through. And you usually skip something, and if you're a and nice guy, you remind the guy before he charges you. Yes, and hopefully not playing one of those people who proxies everything. Yeah, and just annoys the hell out of you. Yeah. What is that rock? <laughs> oh, that, that's a horde of black orcs. <laughs> you know, yeah. As opposed to that rock over there, exactly. which is the horde of and goblins. I had these, I had these uh, 20 empty stands, and those are... Uh, mm. those yeah. are well, know, I wrote Crocs on... Wrote, oh, the Croc space. The Croc right? space. The Croc space, yes. <laughs> that's like a famous one for us, right? Yes, yes. Uh, and then they talk about building your battlefield. Um, you know, just kind of how to set up terrain. It's a quick terrain generator. Right, they replace the old... Well, they replaced. They got rid of all the mystical terrain, which I yeah, kind which, of I'm sad about. Actually, I understand not having it in tournaments, but yeah, the, I, uh, it's, it had a place in games. So yeah, it's it, always it, a fun. Thing. It added fun stuff, right. and uh, but it is it is much more clear as far as what your terrain is and how many events you get. There was a lot of right could be a lot of guesswork in the old eighth edition one, and then which model you use and everything. So I think this just how you generate your terrain, and there's far far fewer terrain options to worry about also. Yes, there hills, are. forests, fields, water, walls, and ruins. So. Right, of course, fields being new. Right, but okay. we had the fields before. They said they didn't do that. They just didn't do what they did. They don't. They, they, they didn't don't cause really do anything. Did they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was just a fence around them that right. mattered. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they kind of keep them spaced away from each other. Just you know, right. Same stuff. It's basically the same, except they give you a fixed, Correct. simple generator that you can quickly put your terrain together. Yeah. And having a handful makes it actually easier for those people that have to take that don't have a local hobby shop that has terrain. Correct. Well, so you, you can actually fix you. your stuff in a box because I remember, you know, you could have like four boxes of stuff, you yeah. know, with eighth edition, yes. and still not use any of the stuff because that's not what you <laughs> rolled, you know. <laughs> or you start start re-rolling things because oh, I don't have any more of those. I don't have any that re-roll yeah, that. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Or I only had one hill. Re -roll yeah, exactly. That hill. And then uh, deployment type. Uh, this is new. Um, Basically, you had one deployment type before. I mean, well, I guess you had, well, you had the, two because you had a diagonal, but no one ever played it. <laughs> so. Well, you had a, you also had the whatever the other one was. The um, remember the old one had six, the six scenarios, right? Right. And one of them was the pass or whatever. I had the lengthwise one. So yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. That's true. I mean, it, but this definitely changed. And this yeah. is no matter what it is, you have these three deployment Correct. types. And you have this same thing. The one new one is this flank attack one where some of the units are forward or back. Yeah, the first diagram they did made it really hard to understand this one. Yeah, that's and true. Once you understood the diagram, you were fine, but... 
it took a little bit yes um, the first time through uh, i think it's much clearer now with the yes they, the, they put the range bands on everything correct um it probably is an improvement they although it's hard you can't do it on a diagonal it probably would be helpful on just for us, us you know simple people to actually put the depth of deployment areas yeah but they don't want to assume that you're i don't think they want to assume that you're 36 inches i mean 48 inches across oh uh, that's true that way you just have to start this far apart no matter how big your table is right yeah I mean, that's true i mean they talk up here about your table being uh um, the problem is they talk about very your board is 72 width. wide by 48 deep that's true and then they start talking about the 36 by 48 and yeah, yeah 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 yeah. and then 18, so, yeah that's 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 a valid so point. the important thing is how far you are apart right right and the one the one difference in the diagonal from the old one is it used to be you end up starting 12 apart right and that's it was six off six off the center line right. now it's now 18. that's 18 is nine yeah not a huge difference just something to be aware of if you're mm -hmm. doing it and of course they added the secondary objectives which i kind of like because basically you don't have you don't have scenarios but the combination of the battlefield layout deployment type and the secondary objectives kind of generates a little scenario mm -hmm. each time you play yeah i mean i think this is uh this is i mean you saw a lot of this in maybe not all of these but you saw a lot of this in in the tournament scene correct you, you'd play a lot with this when you know going to different tournaments so i think this is a good add-on uh con conceptually i think it's a good add-on right um <laughs> yeah. the uh they have four types i don't know if that was necessarily necessary um basically it's hold your ground um but, you know have the most guys within you know the center point of the battlefield break through which you know. kind of we talked about helps the uh helps the uh what do they call it the um god now i'm drawing a blank on it because i'm old well hold the your um, ground can hold can um help the, the horde death army. star the, the death, death star, star army that's what i'm thinking of. you know um if the death star can can't keep like an msu away from the from the distance right right yeah, I guess if the MSU waits long enough and on turn six and then tries and then to move jumps in, jumps in the middle and to contest it. it, correct? But you can't, you can't You're not take, it. take it. So it is a, I think, a, a disadvantage. In, in, in well, actually, no. Um, I'm trying to remember the That's rule. That's in the rule thing. I think it's. Is it? It's most units within range of it, okay. right? Maybe it is. We'll have to. Yeah, I think it's most units within range of points. it. So I think you're still okay there. Okay. Uh, breakthrough, yeah. capture the flag is, I think, the one that's uh, really a challenge for that that you're better off with the death star yes because basically it means i only got one standard or two maybe in that unit you have to kill this to get to yes. get this if i got msu i'm just gonna if i know you got msu i'm gonna target those three units if I, they're probably yeah. killable if i limit my army to three banners <laughs> that means you have to kill my death star to, yes. to get this victory or just two banners yeah. <laughs> so yeah 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 whatever yeah you're right yeah and then the weird the uh, capture the flags which was the old um blood and glory pretty much right where you're just trying to capture more banners than the other guy i like this one because it does reinforce maneuver and i think this one is the anti-death star yes and secure target where you just set a couple markers and you're gaining mm -hmm. points with it. it's kind of the same as the first one but at least there's two markers now and you can make some decisions on what you're going to go for and right that type of thing right i would prefer to have been three markers personally. well three is the problem with that is somebody places two yeah you know that's the downside to that in my opinion yeah i think it frankly you just had it automatically start in the middle of the table <laughs> oh one automatically starts yeah. in the center yeah um roll off to determine who picks deployment zones then you generate your spells nice clarification oh, here on generating know. spells mm -hmm. which is you know the person who uh, uh picked their deployment goes first so yeah, I didn't notice this before. I've never yeah. actually, never actually had this come into play really, where it mattered who picked their spells first. Well, I suppose it could, uh, in certain situations, it could uh, could affect your meta. It could. It's Again, good. it's just like I said, I've just never never paid attention enough yeah. to see it you matter may yet. Want a special counter, or if you've got, if you're one of the guys that has uh, what's that attribute where you can. Uh, pick from different uh the wandering path or something lures or whatever it is yeah so you know 
you see what somebody has and you want to you want to counterbalance there okay yeah. i mean it's extreme that that would be an advantage but you know it's Correct. helpful to know it's just there yeah <laughs> or if somebody's got a big uber spell and you have an opportunity to get a ward save you might just take that <laughs> so yeah that's true if he's got the instead big, of something else yeah he's got the big uber spell that makes you take the initiative test and you generate the spell that gives you plus initiative yes you know that's i guess <laughs> you, you know you're going to keep it yeah <laughs> you know, so. i guess in that that case it does matter yeah yeah okay so yeah but basically this is really a, a decent rewrite for the old uh game in that you have a simplified uh, battlefield, very easy to put together, and very straightforward scenarios and, and, and secondary objectives. Yep. So I like all this. Yeah, again, another improvement. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, the next That's going to be it for that. <laughs>